Hi, or oh, welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. Unfortunately, there are lots of technical limitations in place for me again this week, but I'll try and do the best that I can with what's available. The good news is that for my next update, everything will be back to normal. Well, in the last week, things have turned a good deal more unsettled across the UK, with all areas seeing some rain. But will that continue to be the case as we head through the coming two weeks? Let's see. Here's the view at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 27th. The big change is that the weather has started pushing in from the Atlantic in recent days, hence a more changeable flavour. As I remember the sequence, that continues to be the case but at times high pressure will be having more influence, particularly in the south. There is uncertainty about the balance between areas of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic and the high pressure centred to the south. This is the forecast at 21 GMT on Saturday the 31st of May, the last day of course of the meteorological spring. And the low pressure is just centred to the northwest. It's bringing showers along spells of rain to those parts of the UK, but further south, it's a mainly dry picture. But don't take this at face value. It's not. It's important not to get hooked onto the details when we've got this type of pattern in place. Through the falling days, not a great deal changes. Low pressure continues to bring showers or long spells of rain at times, especially to the north and the west. Drier conditions more likely in the south and the east. Even there though, some rain is very probable. So taking a look at the surface forecast charts from the UKV model, maximum temperatures for Wednesday on the left, rain on the right, 21, 22 degrees in the south, it's cooler as you head northwards. Showers in places, but also a reasonable amount of dry and bright periods. By Thursday, though, it's unsettled. We've got outbreaks of rain affecting large parts of the UK, as can be seen there on the right. But the wettest conditions generally in the northern half of the United Kingdom, where there could be some heavy rain. Warmer and drier as you head southwards. 22, 23 degrees there in central and eastern England. That's probably where the best conditions are going to be if it's dry and fine weather that you like. Then forwards to Friday. Some showers in the north, there's a band of rain there in northern parts of England, northern Wales pushing southwards and fragmenting. But also quite a lot of warm sunshine to be had, 25 degrees there in southern parts of England. In the north it's cooler as has been the case in the previous days, although with that said, not too bad on the whole. Into the weekend. The last day of a meteorological spring here, Saturday, as I mentioned, it's warm across England and Wales, more unsettled there in the north, especially the northwest. Some heavy outbreaks of rain being forecast in western Scotland, heavy showers pushing behind those into Northern Ireland. Then using the uh, lower resolution GFS global model charts for Sunday and Monday, the first two days of summer, indicate that the driest and warmest conditions are once more likely to be found in southern parts of the United Kingdom. But as, as I say, the balance between areas of low pressure steaming in from the Atlantic and high pressure to the south will be toing and throwing. Different computer models are showing slightly different scenarios as well. So some uncertainty, I'm afraid. It's worth mentioning as well. But with that Atlantic flow, it's going to be quite windy at times. This shows forecast gusts on Thursday afternoon. As usual, I'm just using it to illustrate the possibilities. The wind speeds will be varying on a day-to-day -day basis, of course. But as I say, it doesn't look like strong winds are likely at times. Temperatures through the first week. What we can see here is the Mogreps G plot for London. And there's clearly an upwards trend there, peaking perhaps the 31st of May around 25 degrees in the south, maybe a degree or two higher isn't out of question. Mogreps G has a tendency, I think, when looking several days ahead, just to perhaps undershoot a little bit, in the same way that the GEFS ensemble model does. Beyond that, the spread starts to increase. You can see the individual, run, uh, individual runs represented by the different lines are diverging, but there is something of a dip there as we head through the first few days of June, probably as low pressure returns and the warmer air is shunted away. At this time of year, of course, 
with warm air in the mix, at least for part of the period, it does lend itself to the possibility of thundery uh, periods developing. And the chart here is showing forecast rainfall for London once more from Mogreps G. You can see a few big spikes there in the early part of June. They are in a minority. It's just one or two runs which are indicating them and they are going for probably going for thundery downpours as i say that is something to look out for as we have this type of pattern evolving now thundery downpours of course could bring very large amounts of rain in a short space of time to one or two places whereas just down the road it may remain completely dry the point is that Rainfall totals can vary enormously over short distances as we head through the late spring and into the summer. That's because the rain tends to be from showers, downpours, thunderstorms, etc., rather than frontal systems which are pushing west to east and bringing more uniform amounts of rain. But the charts here are showing forecast accumulations for days 0 to 5, and they give some indications of what's probable the wettest conditions generally in the northwest of uk that's clearly shown on the ecm chart on the left less clearly defined perhaps on the gfs on the right moving forwards to the 10-day plots totals have increased especially on the ecm chart there you can see the uh, greens and orangey shadings in uh, wales northwestern england western scotland and Northern Ireland, and that's where the highest amounts of rain are forecast to be. Same on the GFS, but perhaps a little bit drier compared to the ECM in southern parts of the UK. So quite a changeable picture, but the deterministic models in more general terms all show something similar. Let's see. Here's a view from the GFS at 00 GMT on Tuesday, the 3rd of June. It's quite a changeable theme, as I've been discussing. Areas of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic. The Canadian model perhaps has high pressure from the southwest being a little bit more influential, rain more likely to be affecting the northern half of the United Kingdom. The German icon, low pressure there anchored to the northwest, a changeable theme. The ECM model also showing something similar, low pressure just to the west of Scotland at this point. The ECM artificial intelligence model very similar. The UK Met Office global model also has high pressure there centred, uh, low pressure centred to the west of the United Kingdom. So taking them all together, it's a changeable theme with low pressure likely to be close to the west or the northwest. It's going to be driest mostly, not always, but most for most of the time in the south, wettest in the north and the west but all in all it's changeable warmer warmer days are more likely in the south cooler ones in the north does that general theme continue as we head through the second week well as ever it's just about the trends and probabilities of this range so let's start by having a look at the 16 day gefs ensemble plot for london Upper air temperatures across the top, and the signal is quite a strong one. It is for them to be above the average. There are a few very warm runs appearing, and that has been the case uh, from updates in recent days. So the chance of hot and thundery spells is not discounted. It is there. It's not what most runs are probably showing, but it is something to keep an eye on. In terms of rainfall along the bottom, well, dry periods probably sums it up. Wetter conditions may be more likely through the first half of the second week and drier ones through the second. The two metre temperature data tables for London with the maximums on the top and the overnight lows on the bottom part would suggest that temperatures are likely to be above the average for much of a the week. There is that chance, as I've been saying, of hot conditions indicated by the red shading in the columns around 23% towards the end of the second week there. Also, a little bit of the, what I would describe perhaps as very hot, over 30 degrees for happening a number of GEFS runs in recent days, showing temperatures climbing into the mid 30s. They remain in a very small minority, but don't discount that at this stage. The overnight lows, mostly in the yellow bucket, 11 to 15, towards the end there, there's more of the 16 to 27. As I say, the chance of it turning very warm, even hot and humid on some days. Up to Manchester, the trends here are quite similar, although at slightly lower levels in terms of 
upper air temperatures and for our more rain spikes I think than there were on the London chart so it's likely to be wetter here. Two metre temperature data tables for Manchester something of an upwards trend as we go through the second week hence the growing chance of warmer conditions spreading northwards through the latter part of the forecast period. Glasgow close to or slightly above average uh, when looking at the upper air temperatures the anomaly here is definitely smaller than it was on the London chart and I think for more rain spikes on the bottom part of the plot from the work on both Manchester and, and London once so it's a wetter picture here although perhaps towards the end of the second week even here there are some indications of drier periods becoming more likely. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow an upward trend through the days and through the nights by the 6th or the 7th of June there are mostly most runs are in the 16 to 20 category or the 21 to 25 bucket so temperatures climbing through the days the overnight lows also starting to dip uh, starting to rise sorry the mean surface level pressure data table for York suggests that pressure is likely to be rising as we go through the second week there's quite a bit of orange showing up there later on up to about 26 percent those are runs which are strongly dominated by high pressure with that said early on there's still a lot of green in the columns with areas of low pressure being influential so once more supporting the idea that as we go through the second week the chance of dry periods is increasing across the uk especially in the south but even in the north the chance is rising the gefs mean surface level pressure Plot for Friday the 6th of June. This is the snapshot generated by Average and Arabs. All of the individual runs within the ensemble would suggest that high pressure is more likely to be influential in the south and the north. With that said, it looks quite changeable still at this point. So to summarise week one changeable with showers and long spells of rain also windy at times the driest and warmest conditions will be in the south and the east week two the changeable theme continues especially early on so further rain at times but once more it's going to be drier in the south and the east temperatures close to or above the average and there is the potential for very warm and thundery spells in the south and the east also it's worth noting that as we head through the second week the likelihood is that the chance of dry conditions in the north will be increasing as well so there we have it a mixed picture through the next 14 days driest and warmest in the south is the possibilities I've been mentioning of some high temperatures in those areas rain continues to be more likely in the north and the west although towards the end of the forecast period the chance of drier conditions may well be increasing even there anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful as ever then if you did please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Of course, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.